Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome to another video. Today we're going to be doing another leak code problem and this is a problem that is really fun in my opinion. Um, and it's called Find the Celebrity and it's a leak code medium and this is actually a problem that a buddy of mine saw in a phone interview at Amazon. So obviously uh, it's a problem that gets asked in the real world. So the the definition here is really long and like makes it confusing. So I'm just gonna explain the problem to you guys. Basically, you have a list of people at a party um, or a group of people and one person in that group is a celebrity. And that celebrity doesn't know anyone else. However, everyone else knows that celebrity. So you're given this function here called knows and it takes in two values and it returns a Boolean. So if a knows B, then it returns true. So the way that we can use this is that if if anyone ever knows someone, we know that that person isn't the celebrity. And the person that knows someone also isn't a celebrity. Um, so basically, um, say you have knows and you have, say we actually have the celebrity in here and we have like person A, this would turn false because the celebrity does not know the person. So using this function, we need to figure out who the celebrity is. And also, it, the problem states that there might not be a celebrity there at the party. So that's also something that we need to take into account. So the way that to approach this problem is, let's just first start with the first person and have that as our potential candidate. So these people are represented as integers. So we'll just say candidate equals, and then we'll, we have to start somewhere. So let's just start at zero. So what we need to do is we need to loop through the rest of the people and we need to start at one since we already have zero. All right, so with this person, what we need to do is we need to check if our candidate knows them. Um, if our candidate knows them, then our, we know that our candidate can't be the celebrity because the celebrity doesn't know anyone. Um, so what we can do is we can say if knows candidate and I, then we need to update our candidate. And our potential new candidate is gonna be I, since someone knows I, but we don't know if I knows anyone yet. So that's why we're calling it a candidate. So it's gonna be candidate equals I. All right, so once we go through that, we know that we have one person left that someone knows them, but we don't know if anyone knows them or not. So, um, we could do return candidate, but that's only if we were guaranteed to have a celebrity. Since we don't know, we need to do another pass through. Um, so what we can do here is we can do four and then we just do another for loop. All right, so at this point, we'll have a couple cases here. So we'll do if, um, so we wanna first make sure that the value that we're checking is not the actual candidate. And we also need to check two things now. We need to check if our candidate knows someone or if anyone knows the candidate. And if either of those are true, then our, well actually if the opposite is true, it'll return false. So let me just show you. So if we have knows candidate and I, so if the candidate knows someone, they can't be the celebrity. Or if I, knows the candidate. So if I doesn't know the candidate, then the candidate can't be the celebrity. So if we have either of those two cases, we just return a minus one because that's what the uh, that's what the function says, or that's what the prompt says. Um, otherwise, we do return that candidate. So let's go ahead and run that. And we have an error because of course we need semicolons in Java. And so that looks good. Let's go ahead and submit and we get success. So we have a runtime of 97% and a memory usage of 58%. All right, so let's look at the time and space complexity of this. Since we're not using any additional space, the space complexity is just gonna be constant. And the runtime is going to be N because we have a loop here where we're going through each element we also do have this extra for loop, but this isn't adding 
to the time complexity because we are just doing another pass through. So the time complexity will just be linear or n. All right, that's gonna be all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the problem. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you guys next time.